Top Spotlight, brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harry from Bulls Tabletop News with Drake from Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. And we're back with another Tabletop Spotlight. Drake, you brought all the card drawn stuff today, yeah. huh? The first wave. The anyway, first wave. Yes. Yeah. What's dropping Ooh. in the first one? First segment wave, of yeah. it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm super pumped about this. We've already got some of our preview copies in, and we went yeah. through those. We're excited about it. Uh, I can't wait to show this stuff off, though. It's such good stuff. We have the battle tomb. We've got the frigate. Yep, Argonaut frigate. frigate and the company. Yeah, so you've got your everything you need to get playing and started. You've got your first airship that'll be out. Yeah, and then you've got your your core core troops here. So the admiral is also dropping with these, but yes. it's just a blister pack. It's not like. Yeah, you can you can see the blister. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can exactly. look at. You don't need exactly. You don't need a video to tell you what's inside. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Well, that said, uh, let's go ahead and hop in and take a look at all these cool new Caradron stuff products. All right, we've got the Caradron Overlords. Drake, where do you want to start, man? Um, well, I think the book should go last. Okay. First, first one. Let's get a quick look at some sprues, and then we can dive into the. That the sounds good. Which one, uh, Eeny Meeny Miny Mo? Uh. Curiosity killed the cat. I gotta go. I gotta see. We the gotta frigate. look. Okay, cool. Let's start there. We will start with the frigate. We're starting with the big box. Because uh, this is what I'm most excited for to this first. Yeah, one. absolutely. And I think man. I think I'm not the only one. I don't think you are either. This is a lot oh. of really cool stuff. This is the first time, almost ever, I've been greeted with full color out of a box. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> well, it is a full color uh, instruction yeah. manual on how to build everything. New color coding thing that they've been doing mm -hmm. recently. Yep, the blue uh, is the part that's attaching. The yellow is typically where you want to put some glue. The anchor. Yeah. Well, that's all fine and cool. Also, I, I like this now. They're putting, yeah, putting the rolls in there. Anyway, you've already seen that image. Yes. This is what I want to see. Boom. Where Here, does we'll it do come this. from? Ooh. I'll let you do the talking. I'll just, I'll just do this. I'll lay it out for you and then work the camera while you talk about it. So here are the ether orbs. Mm. That's what she getting, said. Getting a look at the sculpts. Oh, my God. So good. They do. The rivet, like I, because looking at the looking at the cut and the, at the finished model, mm -hmm. you would you could easily assume that like these would be two separate pieces based on the seam. Yeah. The seam, it looks like it's an actual seam all the way through. Pretty sure they 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 grouch that. And like normally on like older stuff from like forty or forty k models, like this would be a separate thing you have to slit in. And this has got to be something you like set mm -hmm. in there. This separate piece, and looking at the at the at the model, I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a nightmare. But these are actually pretty big pieces. Yeah. And obviously, crew are included. Some assembly required. Oh, for sure. <laughs> some bottle, some bodies, hoses. You got your sky hook, which I hear is fantastic. <laughs> the steering wheel. It's always useful. Your keel, anchors, rigging. It's all here. It all looks really good. I'm very pleased at the. Uh, Oh yeah, I, this is such a cool kit. Let's flip it over quick. A lot of a lot of folks might not know this, but it is actually hollow, the Aether Orbs. I was hoping so. <laughs> yeah, um, which is cool because uh, that means if you are one of those electronic wizards with uh, lights and, and batteries and stuff. There's space for LEDs. Boom, you can go nuts with oh, LEDs. Oh man, you're, make, you're making me look just like worse. When mine doesn't <laughs> come out I'm just glowing, saying. lighting up with sound effects and yeah. everything. You get on there, dude. I was really impressed, actually. This is a this is a minor thing, and I, I think the rudders are maybe on the other sprue, but um, just the details, the little details that are all over this kit. Um, like for instance, here's one of the fins. You can kind of see that it's kind of offset. Uh, it's got a lot of flat surfaces, but there's a lot of overlapped flat surfaces, so that when you paint it, you can paint the different panels um, and do some really cool practical paint job effects. Yeah, this is well segmented, especially. Yeah. We, and we'll see when we actually look at the pieces of the hull, but. These guys as well, like all these seams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They make painting look so easy. They do. Cause it's like, it's kind of like color in the you're lines. You're gonna put layer on this up here anyway. Yeah. Right. And on the rivets and all that, like this. Yeah. For the as rivets. Big as I love this is, the rivets. Yeah. I know that's a weird thing is, to say, but this also looks easy to paint. Look at that. Quickly. Look at that gear, the the gauges and stuff on that. See, that's a nightmare for me. That's good. That alone is gonna be like- That's gonna be like four hours of painting, but once you get it done, it's gonna look amazing. Well, it's kind of in the middle of the thing. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna, I'm probably just gonna show the <laughs> next mine, dry brush it and <laughs> Just paint the lines on the gauges red and you're good. That so this whole thing is only two sprues. Yeah. Pretty crazy, these are right? all solid pieces. Yeah. Pretty nuts, right? That's- And again, flipping it over, hollow. Mm. 
So again, if you're an electrical engineering whiz, you could probably make these rudders spin. Challenge, uh, challenge somebody. somebody out there. <laughs> but again, even the rudders have like a little, they have that little border on the blades. Um, just something to break it up. They could have just, you could have easily just made those solid pieces and, but they went that extra step and just made them have a bit of a, a groove and have those extra supports on them just to give them a little bit extra flavor, which yeah. is really cool. And that and that depth and that dimension really helps, enables the painter to easily bring out those details when they're yeah. cut physically like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Like, and I love the, the boarding here. Um, it reminds me of, uh, of World War II U-boats, the uh, the way they did yeah. the, the, the planking on the, on the deck, which is really well, cool. Well, it's high friction, it's realistic, it makes sense. Yeah. It's not just wood. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Very cool stuff. Uh, the last thing I want to show off here, well, the last thing for this kit at least, they have a new flyer uh, flyer sprue, yeah. oh. which I thought was pretty cool. Um, See, that looks like a sturdy peg. This is a much sturdier peg for a thing that's on a peg. <laughs> Right. Um, they have, if you remember the old flyer kits uh, that were on that little tiny thin peg, man, those things snapped all the time. This is like a, a ball socket joint now. Oh, I see. Yeah, and, and that socket is made. I don't know if you can tell. Yep. The two pieces of the hull come together, and that's the that's the socket that that goes yep. in. Pops right in there. Good to go. Nice solid base. Glued on there. Ready to rock and roll. So that's the frigate. Uh, let's do the Arcanaut Company next, since we're... Uh, we're gonna do the book last. I'll go ahead and pop this one open real quick. Yeah. Again, these are your standard frontline troopers. You're gonna be seeing, this is gonna be a popular kit just because every single one of the uh, the Arcanaut forces, the, the Cardron Overlords are gonna need a ton of these guys. Yeah, and these are, are all super cool. The only basic troops. Yeah. But the cool part about it is the diversity in which uh, you can build these guys. Yeah, I'm impressed with their options. Yeah, so first off, let's let's do this real fast. What am I talking about option-wise? Well, <laughs> aside from, you know, you've got all your basic bodies. Yeah, you 10 bodies, it. easy. Which 10 bodies. I also like that they're doing that recently, where the, the, the torso and the legs. It's not like you have a separate body that you have to make sure gets the standard or else the whole thing's gonna oh, fall over. Yeah. I know like, exactly what you're like my pink horrors looking at you. What? The pennies on their faces. <laughs> also, uh, they all have, they do have different backpacks. So the backpacks are unique, but the body and the bodies are unique within themselves. But yeah. you can do different things. And I noticed I noticed this trend that they're moving towards when I was putting together my Zangors that I got. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to figure out, make sure, like extra care that I grab the right necks for the right heads <laughs> and go on the right bodies. And then I realized these are all the same. They're all interchangeable. And that. Made it so easy. And I was like, this is awesome. So you can build the Sky Captain a couple of different ways. Uh -huh. um, with an anchor? Or with an anchor. Cutlass. Yep. <laughs> you can build uh, the anchor, uh, Arcanaut with a Sky Hook. And again, all the different head options. Fit on every body. Inter interchangeable. You can go to town, go nuts. Um, Love it. The Aethermatic Volley Gun, which is the big minigun looking thing. All the different barrels. Pretty cool. And then the Sky Pike, which I really like the Sky Pike. I think it looks cool. Yeah. It stands out though, because this is, this is their only like, for these guys anyway, well, aside from the anchor. They're not that great in melee. They're really not. This is actually, that's the only thing that's like, is a special Skyfight, kit yeah. that is obviously like intended for that. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, the, in general, the Arcanauts don't have a lot of hacking slashing We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to there. Hey. Now, now the cool thing, speaking of hack and slash But they've got options, cutlasses. So. You do have cutlass options or like the ax options. And uh, it says here that you can have uh, three, every, there's, for every 10 models, you can take three armed with a sky pike or a specialist gun and form the light sky hook or the Aethermonic Volley Gun. So you get those three options here. Basically, if you buy three box of these, you can have one unit with three of each, which would be kind of cool. But stat-wise, these are the same. Yeah, stat-wise, these are the exact same. Yeah. Exactly. So the, this is an aesthetic, and you can mix them within yep. the unit, and not yep. worry about who's piled in and who's not. These are just Arcanaut Cutters. Yeah, Arcanaut Cutters, whether they're the Cutlasses or the Hand Axes, exact same. Uh, so they're pretty good. Uh, that's the stats on them. We won't go over that too much. Let's take a look at those sprues, though. First up. And these are two different sprues? They, they, you get two sprues. We're gonna look at the first one right now. Mm -hmm. This is the one with the captain on it. Um, oh. I was just really impressed overall with uh, the sculpts on everything. Uh, when it comes to options, these guys, in my opinion, probably rival uh, Space Marines <laughs> with the amount of gear that you can pack onto them. Um, and the best within part- Within a unit. Definitely. Within a unit, for sure. But, but I mean like shoulder pads and backpacks but the shoulder pads already come on the bottle, which is nice. 
If you're like me and you've yes. built like a billion space marines. And you know, you put the tiny shoulders on, then you put the big shoulders uh, on over there. Yeah. This one, they already have the shoulders on there. Yeah, and their whole bodies are one. Yeah. Or a single piece. There's no like front and back. Like they are. Yeah. There's no. They are there. Oh, let me tell you. Like that on the base, done. Yeah. 10 of them. They put the heads. Yep. It's great. And again, full of detail. They're just all the little doodads, the belt buckles, the 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 straps, the uh, accoutrements mm -hmm. on them are just, it's very cool. Um, there's a different, there's a, this basically the big special weapons. You got the, the Aether um, machine gun there, the, the hook. Yeah, volley the gun, skypike. light sky hook, sky pike. And it looks like their hands. Mm -hmm. There's no, I only, okay, I do see three sets, yeah. different sets of arms. So it's not like, you so know. Make sure you match those hands up as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be the one challenge yeah. in here. Yeah. And I use the word use loosely in making sure that the right, the hands go on the right pair of arms. It'll be easy to do it just to oh, sure. follow the instructions. Yeah, because now that they're like numbering and keying these like pretty well now. Yeah. Next up, we got bases. We got 10 bases, very important. I want to mention that. They, in case you were worried, they're all here. <laughs> That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's yep. the next sprue. Uh, it's another couple bodies. Full of cutters. And then all the cutters you'll ever need. And then the backpacks and some extra heads. Very simple sprue, but I like the layout. A lot of stuff's packed on there. You're gonna end up with a lot of extra sprue mm -hmm. bits. By and the way. Uh, yeah, and I like the slight variations between the mm -hmm. cutters. Like cutlasses are all a little bit different. The hand axes are all a little man. bit different. Yeah, it's very cool. But there you go. That's that's pretty much all of the uh, the Arcanaut Company sprues. Now it's time for the big one, the mm -hmm. book. Let's let's hop into that one. I'm gonna pause real quick and we'll get that one over here. All right, here's the big dog, Drake. We got the Order Battle Tomb. Tome. Yeah. Tomb. Keep saying tomb. Tomb. I know. The tome with an E, not a B. Let's dig this grave. <laughs> Car John Overlord. Here we go. Yep. Go on. Jump on in, man. What are you doing? Sweet all spread. Oh yeah. See some zinch going on. Here you go. Makes me feel good always. He is the zinch. You like the zinch. I do like the zinch. So real quick, quick rundown of what's in the contents. Yeah. Um, all the stuff you ever want to know. This is a brand new faction. Right. Uh, these, but it, it's they're the ancestry of the original dwarves. Yeah. Which I think is probably the coolest part of this. Yeah. It's a lot of some of the things that we've seen new to Sigmar, new factions wise, are like, oh, they've always been here in these realms. These guys, it actively like talks about how they are the descendants of the dwarves from the old world. Yeah. Who through hardship and ingenuity have carved an entirely new kind of culture in the sky realm based around ether and trade. Yes. I think it's uh, super cool. I think it's super cool because they are the Ferengi of 40K. Or, or, or sorry, of Age of Sigmar. Of Sigmar, no. Maybe later of 40K, huh? <laughs> huh? Yeah, but they, um, <laughs> they're not squats. Uh, <laughs> but they totally they totally have this, this code that they live by that they've used to survive and judge if it was worth something based on profit, um, which is why they stayed alive. They stayed up in the clouds, uh, uh, mining for aether gold, a bit through alchemical processes. They are very frugal, but it's all based on profit. They don't trade with you if there's not gonna be a profit involved. They don't engage in a conflict if there's no profit to be had. Um, and this, that's how they survive though. Yeah, and this little quote from the, from the code is almost exactly pulled from the classic pirate's code. Yeah. It, it, it almost mirrors that. Like this is almost tit for tat from that quote where it divide, where it talks about and lays out what, how spoils are div divvied up based on roles and positions. It's, I really like the real world, like, yeah, the inspiration is, it is this totally is very... Stick to the code, the pirate code. Right. It's really more, more Except it really is rules yeah, and they really are. To a little bit of a guideline. Also, Willy Wonka. Well, pirate. actually later on there, there is a special, really more of a guideline kind of rule. But this mm -hmm. book is also packed full of awesome new artwork uh, for the overlords. They just look awesome. Um, the whole good. prosper or die philosophy. They totally live in the clouds. Yeah. And they have these giant skyports. There's six big ones, uh, and there's probably dozens more. Um, but the in the skyports is where they, you know, safe harbor basically. This guy's got a gravity hammer. He does. <laughs> uh, this is about the code that they live by, which is down here. Uh, there are um, the original document included nine articles, each subdivided into many sections. Uh, over time, they've been amendments to the codes. Uh, yeah, but it's it's just how to be a good overlord, car driver right. overlord, or how, how as how to an overlord to one. survive yeah. and prosper. Yeah, and some of the some of the skyports they're really strict on the code, mm -hmm. which is where you have your your hardliners, right. and then you've got other skyports on the other end of the spectrum. 
that are a little bit looser on the code where you get your little sky pirate action in. So however you want to play it, whether it's, you know, straight line, hard line code, code keepers or code breakers, you can totally do that with this faction. Um, this is how they trade in the realms, which is kind of nice. A cartographic spectrometer <laughs> uh, used by those in the guilds to track the profits generated by each of the realms. Need more so they profits. actually have like a metric of how profitable each realm yeah. is as they travel between it, which I think is cool. It makes sense that yeah. the fire is so high. Yeah, right now they also, the, the, the Aether Gold is in the clouds. It's a substance mm -hmm. that they mine via like a vacuum. So they suck up all the, 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 the Aether the, Gold. The gold dust. The gold dust, essentially. <laughs> it also attracts monsters. So that's a big deal. Um, which is interesting to me because this really opens up uh, the possibility of us seeing these weird dragon spider or dragon warp beast things coming in. So yeah. I, I don't know where they're going to go with like, it. I don't I, know what this is. Yeah, that's not like a typical. But I want to feel it. <laughs> that's all I know. Yeah, these weird Drake looking things. Not you, Drake, but. You right. Know. No, I understand. Worm Drake. I see how it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is a good shot. Too. This is a good yeah. image of him. They being... are still dwarves. Yeah, they're, they're dwarves. They wear, they wear their Arcanaut armor. It's the only Which is awesome. Way they can survive. But even then, even for a dwarf, this is a little bit too heavy normally. They use the same substance. Everything is based around the substance of ether that powers all their weapons, their vehicles, and makes, and acts as a kind of like a, an actuator it's like a, to it's lighten like, the load yeah, of their armor. Yeah, everything that they, they put it on, it makes it lighter. So that's how their skyports stay afloat. That's why they have to constantly be mm -hmm. uh, uh, moving around, chasing down more veins to harvest more aether gold to keep their society going. Because but it's, it's also, all based on trade. Yeah, and it's and also it's dangerous. Huge. So you turn into weaponry. Yeah, which is awesome. Sense. So super cool. What the <laughs> big old sky beast, and they're in there oh, uh, carving it up. Whale. If you want to do a whaler, huh? You want ever want to do a whaling fleet? <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. Use a lot of sky hooks. Yar. There's more of them. We're not gonna get all up on the but, but all right, the big right. skyports, uh, Bark Zon, Bark Nar, things like that. But here's where the uh, clouds of gold kind of comes in. Mm. Again, the, the aether gold is on these seams, and they float through the sky, so they constantly have to be moving around. Follow the gold. Follow the gold vein. And sometimes they even change different realms. So right now it's really heavy in Shaman, which is like I believe the realm of fire. Um. So that's one of the cool things about it. it. It's that's why they travel where they travel. Here's a bit of the uh, the chronologically history, yeah. history of it. Yeah. Uh, here's a little hint of the guilds. The I do want to want to call this out real quick too. This is important. Uh, that thing right there. That is the ancestral Whoa. hammer. Uh, it is a Crundle class battleship. Um, I don't know about you, Drake. But that's not something that they have listed on their website or have teased it at all. <laughs> yeah, we have, there's been no, like, even nibble about yeah. this. Yeah, but I do want to point out, if you if you go and look at the also models. Also tentacles. Yeah, point that out too. If you go look at the models in the range that they have revealed so far. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, can you toss the frigate box over real quick? Yeah. Just like a cross. Count the, no, the, the, the aether knobs, if you will. The, the, the orbs. The I'm orbs. sure that I'm sure in here it says what they are. They're full of aether. We know that. There's three big ones there. Go look at the smaller. ironclad. Has a bleed two. Also. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just how big that wanted, would have to how be. How big that would have to be, and the possibility it exists. Yeah, it exists in the in the in the game world. And I in suspect the that we're gonna see this on Forge World. Man, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Uh, deep down, I really want them to make a side game involving just uh, aether just ships, just airships. Not like uh, uh, not like storm clouds. Not, not like storm clouds, but just like because like I want them to have like boarding actions, like be real pirate ship, kind of like a a dread fleet, but or sails not. of glory. Yeah, sails of something like that. I just think that this would be like the perfect faction, some kind of sky based pirate versus privateer. Yar, maybe. <laughs> just, you know what I'm saying, man? They want to get swarthy naval do, action yar, in the skies in among the, skies. the realms. I mean, look at them. They got port broadsides. Come on, come on, GW. Make oh, that looks good. All right, Absolutely. keep moving. I'll keep going. There's tons of cool stuff in here. Hierarchy. Um, I don't want to go through all this stuff. Uh, what I do want to skip to though is we we would you get a look at the models? Mm -hmm. um, Heavy metal paint jobs. The the good the, stuff. the the rock Grongnason. This is the uh, hero. That was the word I was looking for. They talk about that. They talk about the lore of each one of the units as well. But what I wanted to skip to was here's some of the models. 
around, skipping around, skipping around. Again, more awesome uh, examples of paint to make you all jealous. And, oh. and feel bad about yourselves, I'm right? sure. <laughs> Just follow Duncan's videos, it'll be fine. Uh, skipping around, it's skipping easy. around. Here's where we go, tips and tricks. They have a whole modeling section, modeling and painting. Let me back up a little bit here. I think, yes. They have this really awesome painting section, which I wanted to spend some time on real fast, because I think it's so good. Um, it has a breakdown for using the technical paints, for how to paint portholes and make them look good. Um, uh, the uh, the new gem paints that they have, very e easy to use. Uh, the vertigris, that stuff. The the which I'm I'm glad is finally there. Yeah, I don't know what to do other than just use nylac. If you want to use uh, some some really quick weathering tips, these are actually really easy to follow, and you'll be kicking yourself at how simple it is. Um, it's just, uh, it's all optical illusions, but it's just using the a lighter paint and then a darker paint um, and basically overlapping them um, to create the illusion of battle damage. But they have all this stuff in here. They also have a really good breakdown of painting for the different uh, sky ports as well. So again, by heraldry and that kind of thing. Exactly. Very, also like very how cool. they subtly like made it, gave them different bases. They did. To further like emphasize that, I think that's cool. Another big thing uh, you'll get into, well, well, each of the sky ports, there's six of them. Each one has their own special code that they do with a, their own special, well, not special article, but it's like a set. Uh, so they have an article, amendment, and a footnote for their, for their code, which is kind of like their traits, if you want to go that route. And then um, if you... Yeah, and it actually, it does, act, they are actually game yeah. mechanics. They are, these are game mechanics. There's a, there's a chart later on that if you want to pick and choose your own, you can do. But if you want to use this specific, like if I wanted to be Barrack, Mornar, City of Shadow, like if that was my fleet, then I would take, you would use these codes and I'd get, for free, I'd get the special ability for my fleet. And then they have my own command trait and work over time and all that fun stuff. And there's more of those. Uh, here's a list of the allegiance abilities and the battle traits. This is what I was talking about. You can you can roll. amendment article and footnote. You can you can choose your battle traits, uh, or you can oh. randomize them if you want to. If you're playing a campaign and want to randomize stuff, but you get one of each. And that's this is uh this is my favorite footnote right here. These are just guidelines. Okay, that's these are just say. guidelines. Yeah. Um, and then of course there's artifacts of power, which I'll skip over. Battle plans, all that good stuff. Um, Path to Glory campaign if you want to run that whole whole thing, which is a ton of fun. And it's a good way to start a new army. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's all the rewards for that. Theming your army, how to do that, again. Um, one of the last things I want to show off is, of course, the War Scrolls. You're going to get all those for all the units. Um, I want to zoom in on this part because it's kind of important. Um, right here. These. This is the iron ironclad rules. If you look at this whole section... The frigate has them as well. The frigate does have them as well. Uh, they have some really cool new rules, which I've pointed out previously, but uh, in a different video. They've got overburdened, which allows you to put extra models that over the capacity of the transport, because these are the first transports in Age of Sigmar. Yeah, and they, they do function as such. Exactly, which is super cool, because this is a vessel, so it can carry 20 folks, 20, 20 units with oh, the Skyfair model. That's so many! But you can overburden it and put up to 25 models on here at the cost of one inch of movement per model over 20, which is super cool. And they only have a move of eight, well only, but they have some extra ways to get extra speed. So anyway. And, oh my God. The setup is actually the biggest thing. It's, 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 if you're following the rules typically, Normally the biggest advantage you can get is if you finish deploying first, you pick who gets first turn. Yeah. That's a big deal. This says when you set it up, you can also automatically include the units of Skyfarers in it, reducing two placements up to, if they're two units of 10, yeah. off your army. That's huge. Yeah, you can, come, you can do a lot of fun stuff in the setup phase, but on top of that, the embark rules and disembark rules are super short, super clear. Um, if there's one thing from Age of Sigmar, I hope 40K takes from it in 8th edition, it's these embark and disembark rules. And the reason is they're super easy to, to understand. Uh, to embark, the entire unit has to be within three inches uh, uh, in the movement phase, and they can embark within it. Uh, if, you're, if you have a model outside of three inches at the end of the move, you can't, you can't embark. It's that simple. Um, embarked units uh, cannot normally do anything or be affected in any way while they're embarked. That's a huge thing. Uh, Done. End of story. End of story. There's no like, oh well, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast this debuff on that unit. You can't. They're not. The, they're 
they're not there for there the are not game. firing points out of, <laughs> exactly out of the frigate's hold there's there's nothing like that uh, you just can't do it um if the ironclad is destroyed everybody has to bail out uh roll a die for each model and ones you lose a model straight up easy and you get easy to pick PG. which model the 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 owning player the one that's doing all the rolls mm -hmm. gets to pick which models die so yeah. you can save your good guys for later you're gonna lose some some yeah. chump guys but it's gonna happen very simple very clean the disembark rules, oh, and then you have to disembark. Disem disembark rules are they can get out with uh, and set up within three inches of the vessel model. Easy. Uh, and they cannot be within three inches of an enemy model. So you can't disembark into combat. Correct. But you can disembark. However, you can. Uh, you can actually do that. Uh, however, if any model can't disembark in this way, meaning three inches from the ship and three inches outside of enemy, they're destroyed. They're slain. They're slain? Yeah. So. But you do have that option. Yeah. Like you could take those hits if it puts you if, where you want to be. To. Exactly. That's kind of cool. on top of that, though. Uh, the disembark unit. You disembark typically during the hero phase. By the way, mm -hmm. after you disembark, the unit can then act normally. That includes using any abilities uh, for the hero phase uh, for the remainder of the turn. And you you cannot disembark and embark in the same turn. You embark in the move in the movement. You embark in the movement and disembark in the hero phase. So typically, you're not going to be able to disembark and then get on another ship anyway. No, are you sure? Yeah, well, you can't do it. You can't get off of a ship and embark oh, on a it's, different Oh, it specifically says, last sentence, yeah. it cannot disembark and embark in the same turn. Yeah, exactly. To prevent those, I'm gonna get out, shoot you, then get back in shenanigans. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that. Uh, the last thing I wanna Good. point out too, which is cool about these rules, uh, is you act normally. So that means you can disembark, shoot, assault, whatever. But not embark again. But not embark again, correct. But you can disembark the charge. Yeah, exactly. So that is the thing. <laughs> so keep that in mind when you're playing these guys. Uh, uh, that's super cool, I think, though. Uh, if you are playing against this, them... Surprisingly, the ships are not juggernauts in combat. <laughs> they they have a bunch of attacks, but they're one damage each, and fours and fours. Yeah, they're, so they're not known for their close combat It's not prowess. like a steam tank where they're going to yeah. get run over. Like It just flies over you if it doesn't hit you with some fiddly bits. I do want to mention one, one other tactic, which uh, if you're playing against them, and that is if you can surround their ship... They and blow disembark. it up, they cannot disembark, and therefore die. Mm -hmm. Are they slain? So, something to think about. Just want to throw that out there. You know, uh, if you're playing as them, watch out for that swarm of dudes running up on you, because they're probably looking to pop you and kill everybody inside. So right. keep that in mind. If you can physically surround it, and yeah. especially because when it's destroyed and they bail out, they have to they have to bail out before they remove that model. Exactly. That's a huge. That's a huge part of this. So if you are around them. They have to disembark before they take the piece out. They cannot be within three inches. Right. Or outside of three inches of your guys, they all die and it blows up. Yeah. So that's a big weakness for both players to keep in mind. Yeah. You balance that with the fact that they can get out and assault the same term though, so. Right, so <laughs> the timing is important. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Uh, also in this book, which we're not showing off, is the points. Mm -hmm. Let's go check that out. If you want to take a closer look at the War Scrolls, uh, go to GW's website. You can check those out. They're on the they're on the product pages, so go check them out. Uh, that's pretty much all of the. It's a uh, cool faction. Yeah, all the stuff that released this week. That's the card on Overlords. It is a really cool faction. Mm -hmm. um, I'm telling you, man. Sky Frigate fights. Let's do it. I'm down. One on one. <laughs> let's do it. Maybe man. maybe a box frigate of these time. guys. Frigate time. Frigate fights. It'll be cool. Let's have a scale. Let's, let's do it. All right. Let's hop out for a really quick recap. Well, those were the new Cardron Overlords. Uh, a lot of cool stuff there. Of course, the frigate, the company, the battle tome. Let's go ahead and uh, crunch some numbers real quick here, Drake. Yeah. Uh, what's the price point on the battle tome going to be? It is 40 for the battle tome. Okay. The frigate is 80. The company is 45. Not bad for. Frigate. Yeah, yeah. We'll take it. Yeah. And the admiral, which again we did not have, is 25. Right on. Well, there you have it. Those are all the prices. Of course, this is all Games Workshop, Age of Sigmar, brand new faction of the game. I know fans are super pumped about this. Dwarves and I know are back. The dwarves are back with a fiery fury coming from the skies. And I know a lot of folks out there, a lot of hobbyists out there, are pretty pumped about these new airships. I know I am. Yeah. I don't. I'm kind of up in the air still. If I want to start a faction, like honestly, like I need another army. I didn't. I didn't think that. I, I didn't think that I wanted to. But after going through the battle, I'm like, eh, it might be worth having a small yeah. force. I, I can see. I can see myself picking up a frigate, maybe two. Yeah, like I need to get this guy. Yeah, just, this. You have to have a for like, me. an airship. Yeah, it's just <laughs> you have to. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, anyway, this has been another Tail Toss Pod. I'm Adam here from Bulls. I'm Drake with Dragons of Comics and Fantasy. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Tabletop Spotlight brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Thanks for watching.